Mr. Shashi Shekhar Vempati, all members of CII. It's indeed a pleasure to be associated again. Uh, virtually, earlier it used to be, I mean, I remember, I recall uh, participating in the summit uh, physically a few years ago at Mumbai. It's uh, nevertheless in the time of pandemic, new technologies and new normals have emerged. And one of them is uh, these meetings through video conferencing, which I find far more useful than traveling all over the world as it used to happen in the past. I would be very brief, and I would start by uh, what Mr. Siddharth Rai Kapoor had uh, mentioned about the OTT platforms. Now, the idea behind the change which was done in the month of November was to bring content at one place, that is Ministry of INB, and platforms at another place, that is Ministry of IT. I'm just clarifying this because in the past summits, in various uh, media circles, particularly uh, in the print circles, there used to be discussion that online and offline content should not be treated differently. The same content, if it is online, it is treated in one fashion. If it is offline, it is treated by some other ministry in some other manner. So in order to bring some sort of, not parity, but not parity, not uniformity, but some semblance that all content should be at one place and all platforms should be at other places. And let me again mention, which I had mentioned uh, in the previous summit, that the role of government in this sector is mostly as a facilitator. Because uh, I keep telling my colleagues within the ministry and outside, that with a budget of around 4,000 crores, this ministry is one of the smallest in terms of budget, but uh, largest in terms of influence. And that influence comes only through the private sector because all the filmmaking in this country, except for say a few films made by NFDC, that is entirely private. The broadcasting, all the channels, except for Prasar Bharti, they're all private. If you take, uh, the OTT platforms, they are entirely private. Of course, uh, Prasar Bharti is now considering to have some platform of their own. NFDC is also thinking of that on those lines. But we must realize that media and entertainment are entirely private driven, just like the IT industry has grown. Media and entertainment has also grown as a private industry and we must focus and facilitate that private initiative. So it's not so much of regulation, but more of a facilitation. And this pandemic, as very rightly remarked by Mr. Roy Kapoor and also by my friend Shashi, has opened new avenues. And one of them is uh, the educational technologies. And now there is no going back. The way children are getting used to uh, studying with the help of uh, technology and devices. It's, it has opened a new sector altogether. Another would be the online uh, gaming, not in terms of uh, uh, gambling, but uh, the various games. Earlier, the games used to be from different countries outside. And now we are focusing on Indian games because that will be another sector which will uh, uh, not only promote the industry within the country, but it also has an export potential. Given this overall scenario, I think there are two messages which I would like to uh, pass to the members through the CII summit. One is that 2022 is the 75th year of India's independence, and that is going to be celebrated. All of us will be part of those celebrations within the country and outside. And I think uh, with CII, uh, with all the members, it could be a great initiative if we can project. And definitely media and entertainment has tremendous soft power to project India. So in the 75th year of independence, 
starting from say 2022. If we can use uh, our platform of CII to project India's soft power through media and entertainment. And secondly, about education technologies, about gaming, that would be another sector, which is a growing sector and all of us can work together. A small point, uh, uh, just that is an immediate point, uh, which I'd like to remark is that the Honorable uh, Finance Minister has is going to have the uh, budget discussion next week. Uh, some of uh, you have already sent the comments. Uh, you have been invited there. You have sent your comment. So if there is something further, uh, you may like to uh, make that presentation to the Finance Minister and also uh, keep us informed because uh, she would be taking inputs from you as well as from the ministry. And I think uh, in this year, from the print side, we have received certain suggestions from media and entertainment also. Uh, those suggestions would be very useful because many of the things which you uh, desire or which you feel are necessary, perhaps if they are there in the finance minister's budget speech, it would be very helpful to all of us, whether in the industry or in the government. So I would again thank you and uh, hopefully uh, we'll meet next year in a physical uh, format. And I also take this opportunity to invite all of you to the uh, India International Film Festival that is uh, in Goa. And Goa is going to have two festivals in 2021. One is the 50th, the current year's festival, which is in January. It's going to be in a hybrid model, I think, uh, in the afternoon, there is a session in which uh, our officials from IFI would be speaking more about it. So you all are invited. Uh, it's in a hybrid uh, mode. The inaugural and the closing ceremony would be physical, and some films would be uh, screened in the theaters. Others would be in a virtual mode. So with this, I once again thank CII and uh, Hopefully, we meet again next year in a physical mode. Thank you. Uh, Prakash Javdekar ji, uh, respected Secretary INB, Amit Khare ji, uh, and all of my colleagues from the industry. Uh, this is my fourth uh, time at the CII. And as uh, Madhavan rightly pointed out, it is unique and different uh, that it is happening online virtually uh, during this very challenging uh, pandemic. Uh, COVID-19 most challenges uh, to all of us in the media uh, industry and the public broadcaster was uh, no exception. Uh, we've uh, not only had uh, several challenges uh, over the past few months going, uh, we also unfortunately lost some of our colleagues. Uh, so I uh, pay my tribute uh, to uh, all of them uh, who were uh, working for the cause of public broadcasting to keep the services on. Uh, despite the long, uh, DD News and AR News kept informing and reporting on all the developments. Uh, the various channels of Doordarshan and All India Radio uh, created uh, content to create uh, to ensure that uh, the precautions were being taken, be it the mask up campaign, uh, be it the various infomercials that were aired uh, on sanitation and precautions and uh, safe distancing. Uh, uh, in fact, it is a sign of uh, the effort that the public broadcaster took uh, on behalf of uh, you know the entire nation and the industry. Uh, is that I, I saw some reports uh, that uh, the Doordarshan was amongst the top uh, social advertisers uh, during this period. Uh, so it just goes to show uh, how much of effort the public broadcaster uh, uh, put uh, during this very challenging uh, 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 few months. Uh, interestingly, this was also the period when uh, the entire nation reconnected with brand Doordarshan. Uh, these days, uh, uh, thanks to whatever is happening in the industry, uh, most conversations uh, steer towards happy question. Uh, but I'm going to uh, highlight a different aspect of the TRPs, and this is where the uh, the ratings that Doordarshan achieved uh, through the airing of uh, Ramayan and Mahabharat uh, during the lockdown weeks, uh, which a national record, uh, but also uh, went on to underline that uh, there is still an audience for wholesome family content and uh, the public channels uh, continue to be the channels that bring families together. 
content. Uh, I think uh, it was a phenomenal experience and uh, it, it brought uh, the entire uh, industry uh, on a nostalgia uh, trip. Uh, you saw old serials being aired again, a lot of nostalgia being uh, you know, experienced and the past being relived. Uh, the period also saw a very uh, interesting aspect of what is unique about uh, public broadcasting in India. Uh, when schools were closed, universities shut, uh, the channels of Durdarshan and the stations of All India Radio uh, started carrying educational classes across states in multiple languages. Uh, we had tele classes going on for several and, uh, and radio classes. And uh, this was possible largely because uh, of the free to air DTH platform uh, that the public broadcaster has created, uh, DD Fridish. Uh, DD Fridish is a very unique that uh, no public broadcaster anywhere in the world operates a free to air uh, DTH platform of this nature. And given the phenomenal reach of Fridish uh, into 35 million homes, uh, the, the ability to keep the classes going despite the constraints of you know uh, online classes or uh, not having access to computers, not having access to good internet speeds, uh, the, the free to air channels kept education going that saved a number of students uh, from missing out on a school year. Uh, in fact, this point was highlighted uh, by several international newspapers uh, that India was among the few countries uh, which was able to put broad structure to public use uh, during this pandemic uh, to keep education going. And it's a very unique, uh, uniquely Indian uh, phenomena uh, that helped us during this uh, very crucial period. And that also leads me to uh, my next point, uh, which is that uh, innovations like Fridish are possible, not purely because of the public efforts, uh, but because of the public-private uh, collaboration, uh, because it is the private channels on this platform uh, that have created this massive reach of 35 million plus uh, households. Uh, and uh, for India, the opportunity exists to take this kind of innovation in broadcasting further uh, to a leadership. Uh, uh, to, these days, there's a lot of talk of 5G and emerging technologies. Uh, India is one of the few markets, the largest markets for mobile phones and smartphones. Uh, and the opportunity exists for in, uh, in bringing broadcasting to smartphones directly, uh, just in the way we brought uh, satellite-based broadcasting to homes all over India in a very similar model. Uh, is today possible, technology is being developed. And very interestingly, this technology is being developed in India by startups in India. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat, uh, which the Prime Minister has been championing, uh, where we develop uh, these emerging technologies in India. Uh, but we also establish a global uh, you know, leadership position uh, by ensuring that it is uh, Indian patterns, Indian intellectual property across the globe. Uh, and uh, once again, this won't be possible by the public broadcaster's efforts alone. Uh, we have tied up with IIT Kanpur. IIT Kanpur has been doing a lot of stellar work in the 5G space. Uh, some recent standards globally are out of those efforts. And uh, so even in the case of 5G uh, mobile broadcasting to smartphones, uh, we would look forward to all our uh, private sector partners uh, to uh, work with us, bringing this to the market and helping uh, India not only become self-reliant in this technology space, uh, but to also become a global leader. Uh, so once again, I want to thank uh, CII for this uh, opportunity and my best wishes to summit, uh, over the next few days. Thank you. Latest update or khabron ke liye TV1 India ko subscribe kare aur notification paane ke liye bell icon ko dabana mat bhule.